Good morning, everybody out there in YouTube land, out there in across the fruited plain or fruity plain in America today. Uh, I wanted to come to you and talk to you a little bit about something that a charismatic encounter, X-File type, weird, creepy encounter of the third kind that I had with, with a charismatic the other day. I'll give you some time to get on here because it'll take a while, probably. That is, if anybody can actually get on here and see anything that I'm doing, we'll see what happens, right? But who knows? Good morning, Deet Surface Detailing and Mary Weeby. Elijah Morgan. Jacob's not dead. Well, that's good. Blaine Medlin. Blaine Medlin. The Texas Boys. Maura Hoffman. Andrea from Iowa. Carrie from Parts Unknown. What an interesting time I had. And Becca. Jacob Terry's not dead. We'll wait for you to get on so I can explain my encounter. From Canada. Oh, Canada. You know, when I was a kid, the only reason why I know about that old Canada song, when I was a kid, when I used to watch wrestling and whenever the, <laughs> whenever this Canadian tag team came out, they, they always played that song. <laughs> oh, Canada. <laughs> ah, anyway. Okay. All right. Maybe I could move this over this way a little bit. There we go. All right. Anyway, that's the only reason why I remember that song. Seriously. All right. Anyway. So. In a second here. This interesting thing took place here with this. With this charismatic nut job. It. They find me. I don't know what it is. But those charismatics, they find me wherever I go. I mean, they find me. Absolutely. I don't know how they do it. Well, it's the devil's in them. But they find me no matter where I'm at. And they're just like drawn to me. And they got to come, they got to come out swinging after a while. Carl! Like a moth to a flame. That's right. That's how they find me. Well, so I was waiting a few minutes to get to this so I can get a few more people on here. We'll see what happens here. Uh, if, if we do get any more on here. We've got 12 on here so far. Which tends to be a miracle in today's day and age. For me anyway. Since I get buried, half the people don't even get the notifications. More than half of them. But anyway. And then it'll fluctuate. It'll go from like, oh, this many to like, boom, you got nobody. I'm like, okay, that's cool. That's the way that goes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Satan uh, knows where to find us. Definitely knows where to find us. So, interesting enough, so I take my family to the state fair yesterday. It's kind of a family tradition. We do that. Every, every year, 
Uh, and then I then we go preach outside of the the state fair for the for the rest of the time. Uh, the guys do. Lord willing, if the weather holds out, man, it's rainy here. It's nasty. It was nasty last night at that fair. Uh, yesterday, it rained the whole time. We had to hide in buildings. It was something. Which I didn't wear my mask, by the way. They were like, masks are required. I'm like, okay. And I sat there without a mask. Stood there in the outside of the rain, inside of the building without a mask. I'm like, yeah, okay. They did their dead level best to ruin that that fair by scaring everybody half to death. They tried to scare everybody away. Like, don't show up, you're going to die. That type of thing. It was unbelievable. But anyway. That's good, David. I'm glad, I'm glad you're an ex-charismatic. So I got to get into this story about the charismatics. I got to give you the story about what happened with these charismatics. Close encounters, right? Charismatic encounters of the third kind. What a little long-haired creepy devil. Okay, so I go pick up some pizza for my wife and I, I'm walking back and I see this little creep Um, I see this little creepy guy with a long ponytail all the way down his back. And he comes up and he's talking to my family. And I walk up there and my wife told him, you know, he was trying to witness, I guess. The way, wait till you, I tell you the way that he witnessed, right? Um... Yep, hair like a woman, that's right. So so I cut I, I walk up to him and he's talking and he's like, Oh, I want to pray. I'm like, yeah, okay. So I sat there and he was praying, right? And then he looked at me and he goes, he goes, I see liberty in your eyes. I see that you're that you're free. There's a lot of Christians in bondage, but I see that you're free. Like I can look in your eyes and I see you're free. And I'm like, okay. And, and then, you know, they can never just like walk away. They don't operate like that. Like they can't do that. Okay. They can't just like walk away from you. They got to put their mojo on you. I mean, they got to get their mojo going. They have to, they can't help it. It's like in them. They just can't help it. Like I had this, this girl one time, this girl found my wallet. It was really weird. This was like months ago, months before she found my wallet and she, and then she returned it to the police department and everything like that. Well, then she, I'm walking with the guys in the store and we're getting some, uh, like lunch meat or something like this, like a, a year ago. And this girl goes, so, uh, can I lay hands on you? And I'm like, No. And she's talking to me. She's like, so you don't want me to lay hands on you? And I'm like, no, I don't want you to lay hands on me. I don't let strange women walk up and touch me. Why? My wife really doesn't like that either. And she wanted to lay hands on me. and They, they want to pass that mojo on to you. Man, they got to give you some of that spooky juice. They got to pass it on to you, man. They got to get them spirits and them devils on you, man. They want it bad. So anyway, so this guy's talking to my my family like that, right? And 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 he's and and he goes and he starts saying, "Well, he goes and he pull he opens up his wallet. He opens up his wallet and he's got this pre-scripted thing. First of all, he tells my wife, oh, while I've been out here at the, he, he walks up to my wife and he tells her, hey, uh, just pray and ask Jesus to save you. Just say, Jesus, come into my heart and save me. 
Like he's walking around, that's all he's saying to people. He's not preaching the law of schoolmaster to bring men to Christ. He's not telling them they're lost and dead in sins. He's not telling them they're guilty before God. He's not telling them the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He's saying, pray this prayer, say this incantation, repeat after me, say this. And my wife's like, I was already saved when I was 17 years old. And my wife could see that there's absolutely no, and he looks at my wife and he says, I've already prayed this with 200 people today. And he was pronouncing these 200 people saved that he had prayed this prayer with. So he's walking around telling people, repeat this, repeat this prayer, which is nothing more than like an incantation. It's like an incantation that he's asking people to repeat. He's not preaching the gospel to them. He's not warning them to flee from the wrath to come. He's not telling, it's not even the sinner's prayer. No, it's not even that. And no doubt when he looked at me, he saw liberty in my eyes because he didn't see any devils there that he could, that he could incite. And it probably bugged him. Well, get this. So he says that to me and I, and he goes, I have this, I have this prayer that anybody can say, and this prayer uh, will break all generational curses. And I'm like, that's a spell. And I said, no, I'm not interested. And he goes, and he goes, why you don't believe in that? I go, no, I don't believe in that. I said, when the son of man shall make you free, Jesus Christ came to set the captives free. So when the son of man shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So no, I, I don't believe, I don't believe I have to repeat your little prayer uh, for generational curses. Cause I don't believe, he goes, oh, you don't believe in that? Oh, he goes, well, well you don't. And then he starts getting all huffy with me. He's like, oh, well you don't believe the Bible then. I said, no, I don't believe you. I believe God's word. I don't believe you. I said, I don't want nothing to do with your spells. I don't need your spells. At all. I said, get away from me. Just get away from me. He's like, oh, you got devils in you. I said, a few minutes ago, you said I had God in me. Now I have devils in me? How does that work? Right? Right? You just told me you saw God in me and I had God in me and now you're saying that that you see devils in me. Oh, you're devil possessed. No, I think it's the other way around, Jack. I think it's you that are devil possessed. I think you got devils in you and you thought you were gonna take your little mojo spell and you were gonna put it on me and I was gonna fall for your charismatic, magical garbage from hell. Nope, not today. At all. Why? Because it's garbage. It's from the pit of hell. It sounds like a sorcerer and a wizard. First of all, the Bible says it speaks against vain repetitions. So for him to print out some pre-scripted prayer for me, that's not scripture, by the way. There's nothing wrong with reading the Psalms. There's nothing wrong with praying the Psalms. They're the Bible. This guy's got some pre-scripted prayer that he wrote that's going to break all generational curses like it's some kind of magic mojo. But see, I looked past him and I knew that it was the devils. I knew that it was the devil and I knew that it was the Lord allowing it to happen to remind me that this is the battle, that, that you're, you're not going to preach to thousands of people this week and not have a problem. You're not going to do that. You're not going to preach to thousands of people and not have Satan oppose you. That, that's not going to happen. You're not going to hand out thousands of tracts this week and you not have Satan show up and knock on your door and say, I just want you to know I'm here.
And that char he, that charismatic guy, he could not stop yapping at me like a little dog. I said, just get away from me, little devil. Just go on. Go on. Get away from me. Got his little sheet there with 200 people that he's praying, that, 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 that he ran through a prayer. Not even a prayer. It's not even a prayer. And then handing out slips of paper of generate uh, of 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 spells to break generational curses. Now he called them prayers, but I'm gonna tell you what they are. They're spells. That that guy and the devil's in him. More importantly, right? They wanted. They want you to say those spells and trust in those spells and trust in those 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 uh, um, incantations. You don't find that anywhere in the scriptures where somebody's selling you some, some miracle elixir except Simon the Sorcerer. And he just got mad at me because I wasn't buying into his mojo. I wasn't buying into his celestial underwear. I wasn't I wasn't buying into his to to his golden plates to his golden ticket from Charlie's chocolate factory. That's what made him mad. Right? And the fact that he that that he comes up to my family and does what he does like that before I get there just even proved more that he was such a stinky little Weasley devil. With his long fruity hair, walking around saying, uh, saying uh, incantations and prayers, prayers. I can't tell you how many times that stuff has happened to me, and how those people like search me out to find me, and they all want to lay hands on you. They all and what they say and what they do is not scriptural. It's not Bible at all. I look, he goes, oh, you don't believe in that, huh? And no, I don't believe in that. Right? Of course I don't believe in that. Because it's not biblical. You'll see these charismatics everywhere. They are the false, they are the false prophets. They are the false representations of the scriptures, uh, or they are the false representations of, of, of an evangelist. They do not preach the gospel to people. They maximize, uh, they, they, here's another one. I was preaching in Owatonna here last week, and I'm preaching the gospel, and this guy, I'm up on the, on, on this, and I've got my half mile hailer on, and I'm up there preaching the gospel. This guy walks by, plugs his ears. And then comes back and asks me if I've been filled, if I've been, if I've been filled with the Spirit, if I've received the Holy Ghost. And, and I said, Yeah, I've received the Holy Ghost. Have you been filled with the Spirit? Yeah, I've been filled with the Spirit. Do you speak in tongues? I said, No, I don't speak in tongues. No, why would I? Right? Why would I? But that's what they do. And they're always around when the gospel's being preached. They always fly in the fowls of the air. Always. I told the guy, I said, you're not, I told the guy last week when he said that, when he stopped his ears, I said, you're not even a Christian. A Christian doesn't stop his ears at the gospel. That's not a Christian. They don't plug their ears when they hear the gospel. But that's what he was doing. They always talk about deliverance, but deliverance comes, that's what salvation means, by the way. Salvation means deliverance. That's what it means. 
That's another word for salvation. To be delivered is to be. It, it says it, it, it says these come not out but by fasting. Nothing to do with some magical prayer that said some words that need to be repeated a certain way. That's not. That's not what the Bible says. But these guys are so stuck. I've seen them, men and women. They're both alike. They have the same Weasley spirit. The one, the women, a lot of the women tend to have this creepy, like sexual spirit about them. It's really creepy. It's super creepy and weird. They have this like weird, it's like uh, the lady that uh, over at uh, Bethel in California, Bethel Redding in California, I think it is. That lady that has that, talks about the Holy Spirit. She rubs her legs together and talks about the Holy Spirit. And then the other charismatic lady that said that, says that the Holy Spirit, or says that Jesus got in bed with her. There's another charismatic lady this week that says that she's a pastor at Bethel, a pastor at Bethel in uh, California, Bill Johnson's group. And she said, she said this week that Jesus, when she was delivered, that Jesus got in bed with her and played with her hair and told her everything was going to be all right and he was sorry. I don't know what it is with these charismatics, but Jesus is always telling them he's sorry. That's how you know you're dealing with a witch. Is Jesus doesn't tell us he's sorry. You repent to Christ. You have sorrow in your heart to Christ when you get saved by the grace of God. It isn't Jesus apologizing to you. Your face is in the dirt. You're humbled before God. You're broken over your sin. And you humbly come to the cross and beg Christ for forgiveness of sins and to cleanse you and to save your soul and to make you a new creature in Christ. Jesus isn't saying he's sorry to you about anything. God is not a man that he should repent. But I've seen him with that spirit. I, I've watched, I watched that lady. I watched her. Oh, the Holy Ghost is sneaky, she says, in like this creepy sexual way as she drinks this bottle of water. It, I'm telling you, they got mad, crazy, perverted devils in them. They do. They, they just do. That's who they are. And the guys have this weird passive aggressive spirit about them. The charismatic dudes, they got this weird, like, passive-aggressive spirit about them. And then they get mean and nasty, and they try to do it in a way that, you know, is... Um, I had this guy named Nick up in up in the cities. Uh, he says he led, like, you know, 5,000 people to the Lord out someplace. And, I mean, that's the kind of stuff he says, right? Uh, and that guy got so mean, he was like a rabid dog with me when I was standing there. And he was speaking in tongues. While he was while he was trying to yell at me, he was speaking in tongues. And I told him, I said, "You just got a bunch of devils in you. Is all you got? That isn't that isn't that isn't biblical tongues." Sharon, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Women are to be honored as the weaker vessel. I don't know what you mean by that. I do honor women as the weaker vessel. I have a, I have a wife and five daughters. I absolutely honor them as weaker vessels. But um, anyway, that's that's what those women do. I've seen them. Those charismatic women, they they are the witchiest women you've ever. By the way, they run around those Pentecostal holiness movements too. And what they do is they'll have their their hair coverings and all that other stuff, and they'll put that on and they'll act like they're really scriptural. And the guy is sitting in the corner not saying anything while the woman is doing all the talking. I remember at a state fair about four or five years ago, I ran into this Pentecostal holiness couple, and they did the same thing. This woman had her hair bonded on, and man, she was just she was just so holy, you know, she was just so right. And the guy is like a little weenie sitting there not saying anything. While the woman is doing all the talking and running the show. That's charismatic women for you. That's how they are. Loudmouth, 
Jezebels. I don't know, whatever. Maybe they were SDA, Jacob. You could be right, but does it really matter? I mean, is it any different, right? Aren't they all the same? When they're SDA, every SDA man I've ever seen has this scrawny little skinny effeminate attitude about them. And the and, and they exalt a woman above measure. And they, they, they exalt Mary, or not Mary, um, what's her name? Ellen G. Witch. They exalt her and make her something. It's the same spirit. It's the same exact spirit. It's like all the same. They, they all have that weird effeminate spirit about them. And they exalt these women above measure. It's the it's same as Catholicism does the same thing. That's why the Catholic priests are so fruity. Number one, they don't have a wife. Right? They don't have a wife, so... And they practice celibacy, which is against the scriptures. Right? All of it. You, you can see it plain as day. This is what those people are, and this is, they're deceived. They don't have the gospel. They've exalted things in this. They, they exalt things, and they put things, they put gifts above what's right and what's true. So anyway, lots of things with that. And the greatest opposition the greatest opposition the greatest opposition to the gospel is normally charismatics when we're out preaching. Normally it's it's those people that pretend to be Christians. They are normally the greatest opposition that we have. They just are. And they have another spirit that drives them. So anyway, that was that was another encounter. Boy, I could give you a ton more. I could give you a ton more examples. Man, I could go on and on and on about the encounters I've had with charismatics. Charismatic women, charismatic men, just the things that they how they've opposed the gospel, how they I remember there was this redheaded dude, this kid one time. He came up and he smacked me in the face. And he kept yelling at me. He'd walk up to me and he, and while I was preaching, he'd go, Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! And he'd like yell at me, Holy Ghost. And he walked up and he smacked me in the face. <clears throat> that kid was the strangest kid, man. This black dude walks up to him and goes, I'm going to fold you up. He goes, you better leave these people alone. I'm going to fold you up. That black dude told him, he said, you better get out of here. I'm going to fold you up right now. <clears throat> and because he got so annoyed. Lost people saw it and got so annoyed at what this guy was doing to us. Because, I I mean, I didn't fight him. But no, I didn't smack him back. I don't hit people. No, 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 no. No. Not at all. No, we're there to preach the gospel. We're not there to fight people. God will deal with them. We let the Lord deal with them. I've had a lot of people spit on me and um, attack us and all kinds of things. But we don't, we don't attack them back. We don't do that. We let the Lord deal with them. We're there to preach the gospel. We're not there to... I'd protect myself. I'd detain somebody if I had to. I've done that before. I'd arrest somebody if I had to. A citizen's arrest. I've done that before. Um, I, I remember one time I had a guy attack me. 
I've, I've had one guy, one guy attack me and I detained him and I arrested him. Uh, and then the cops came and I, and, and I looked at the cops and I said, well, what do you want me to do? And he goes, I go, I go, what are you going to do with this guy? And they go, well, we didn't arrest him. You did. You have to tell us what you want to do with them. And I said, oh, okay. Well, I mean, I just want him to go. I just want him to leave us alone. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to press charges against him or anything. And they said, okay, we'll just drive him down the road and get him away from me and drop him off somewhere else. So anyway, that's what we did. So, I mean, I'm going to do it. Um, but we're not there to fight. We're not, we don't do that. We're there to love people and give them the truth. And that's what we do. So, and you pray for us. I, I hope you pray for us tonight. Pray against those spirits, man. Pray against those principalities, those powers, those rulers of the darkness, this world, that spiritual wickedness in high places. You pray for us. We need it. You pray for our safety. Pray for our speech. Pray for our minds and hearts to be dedicated to the Lord and to his work. Pray for us to um, uh, not be provoked, not to give in to... Uh, to provocations and that the Lord would hold the, the bad weather off so we could preach the gospel to these people and that we could hand out many gospel tracts and see many people saved and, and at least seeds planted. And in this ministry, you don't see a lot of people saved right away. You, you throw the seed everywhere. It goes everywhere. And we don't know where that's going to land. We just know that that seed's going to go everywhere and it's going to bear much fruit. So uh, eventually, to some, it's going to bear fruit. Okay. So that's just the truth. That's, that's the way it is. Hang on one second. Hey, how you doing? Good, how's yourself? Thank you. Appreciate it. Take care. Whoa. Orientation is locked. Hey, guess what? I just got in. Check this out. Are you guys okay that I'm completely unprofessional? Check this out. Let's see here. Hold on. Let me see. If I... All right. All right. All right, you ready? Let's see. Let's see if I can get this out here. I think I can. Let's see here. Oh. See what this is, huh? Still with me here? All right. Ah! Oh, check it out. Here it goes. Ah! Oh, look at this. Are you ready? Look at this. A live unboxing. Look at that nice gold box. Check that out. Oh, yeah. Look at this. I'm doing it one-handed. Look at this. Oh, it smells good. I, you know why I'm so excited? Because I wanted a preaching Bible, and I bought one, and I, I had it shipped. I had it shipped. Right? Oh, look at that. It's in. Check it out. It made it. It made it for preaching. Yeah. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, I love that leather smell, man. Look at that. Perfect size. I'm so excited, man. 
That's my preaching Bible. I wanted a preaching Bible for the street. I'm like, man, I need a preaching Bible for the street. I just need a smaller one. Oh, it's awesome. I made a mess of everything in here. It's great. I couldn't be more excited. Perfect size. Oh, I love the color. Check it out, man. Check it out. Oh, it smells good, too. Oh, the text is perfect size, too. Just what I wanted. Let's see here. Man, oh, man. Church Bible Publishers. Oh, it smells good. Cadillac, Michigan. Perfect size. Perfect. That's what I wanted. I'm so excited. And you got to share it with me right here live. Live. How about that? This is blue leather, but it smells good. Oh, that's where you live? Well, you should have bought me one of these then. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. So you can go and you can look at all these Bibles. Perfect. Right there. Amen. All right. Anyway. Well, God bless you all. You take care. And uh, you pray for us tonight. We need it. Lots of prayers. And if you want to support the ministry, pray for us, number one. Number two, you can PayPal us at salvationpreacher at gmail.com or pastorcooley at icloud.com, or you can mail us something. All right? Pray for us, though. We need it. Pray for us tonight. I'm going to come to you live tonight. In the rain or shine, Lord willing. So hope you're around tonight. And uh, maybe we'll, this weekend, over the next two weeks, I'd like to do some man on the street interviews, things like that. All right, everybody. It's good being on here with you. I miss you all. Love you all. I'll be back to doing broadcasts sometime soon. Pray for us. Appreciate it. God bless you all. Take care.